<laughs> you got one in mind? Okay. Yeah. Um, let me first come up with an example, and then we'll, then we'll do uh, one with the group. My father and I have a wonderful relationship right now, a very good, very warm relationship. That was not always the case. There were rough and stumbling moments. I remember once in particular, I wanted something out of my own career and, and choices in life and schooling that he didn't think was appropriate for me. How many of you have had something similar like that with your parents? I have. All right. And, well, it's natural. I mean, obviously, we're our own people, and our parents want the best for us as far as they think the best for us is concerned. And at some point when we're growing up, what they think is best for us gets overtaken by what we think is best for us. And we grow into our own values is really what happens. And our values are not the same things as what our parents are necessarily, though often we're influenced by those. But sometimes as we grow and as we learn, we choose our own values, what's important to us. As a result, we get into conflicts naturally. So for example, my, my dad wanted me to have a, uh, a big name education, okay? And because he went to Harvard, but I was not a Harvard man. I was a Cornell man, which was okay with him because it was still a big name. Turns out I was not a Cornell man. I had gone to school in New York City at a very high-powered prep school. So I had the benefits of an unbelievable prep school education in New York City with culture like you wouldn't believe. Access to culture, it was just unbelievable. I would not like living in Florida were it not for the ability to travel, because Florida just doesn't do it for me. Um, that said, I was what is also known as a big fish in a small pond. My high school was very, very small. My graduating class was about 108 people. This is a, I'll give you an example of the kind of level we're talking about here. Newman and Redford's kids went to my school, number one. Number two, when Omni Magazine ran an article in, in, in their mag about a couple of kids that hacked into um, a couple of computers at a Pepsi Corporation, and also, you heard about this? Yeah, yeah. yeah Pepsi Corporation, and also um, uh, a bank in Canada. It was two of my buddies. Okay? The school never gave them up. Oh. Shoot. I wonder if the statute of limitations is up. Anyway, the school, the school never told on them. And the FBI were there for two weeks sorting through, you know, the waste paper baskets for paper. Like they would be dumb enough to leave hard copy anywhere. But the funny part was they went into the Pepsi cannery and logged into their computer over there and sent a convoy of 18 trucks full of Pepsi across to uh, a convent in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> All the Pepsi shows up. We got a work order here for... We didn't order this. Silly stuff like that. Well, the bank was not so silly. They actually zeroed a couple of accounts. Yeah. So I know who they were, <laughs> um, as far as you know. And um, about 50% of our graduating class, again, more evidence of the ridiculousness of the school, 50% uh, of our graduating class applied early decision to Harvard. That's how high-powered it was. So I liked Cornell, and I didn't want to go for liberal arts. I went for architecture school. Okay which was my values, not my dad's. But it was still okay with him, because why? It was Cornell. Well, Cornell was a very, very huge pond. So I was a very small fish in a huge pond, and I'd never learned how to study that way. I was a very fast natural learner who didn't like academic learning. I never learned how to read a textbook in high school. I could get in 10 minutes of talking with a professor what it took everybody else 45 minutes to get in class. And in the small school that I went to in New York, we had the opportunity to meet with teachers weekly. I don't mean weekly. I mean weekly, every seven days, right? So I could meet with my, my teachers after class. I could futz around in class and then spend 10 minutes with the teacher getting everything everybody else was getting in more time. And because my teachers knew that I was good at that, they, they went along with it. But nobody at Cornell is going to go along with that. That's just not how Cornell works. So I fumbled at Cornell. Meanwhile, I knew how I knew how to study the right way, but it didn't work at Cornell. So I spent two years learning that. And then I went to a very, very small pond and became a very, very big fish in a small pond again, which worked for me fine. I actually transferred from Cornell to Eckerd College over in St. Petersburg. And within six months became uh, a research experience for undergraduates scholar and got a stipend to do graduate level work at the undergraduate level at USF. So I was commuting back and forth. Vision, computer vision research. I mean, it was a wild opportunity that would never have happened to me in Cornell. And I thrived under it because it was a whole different learning paradigm, right? If I could define my own learning process, I knew I was faster than some of the other folks around. Because academic style learning is not the optimal way to learn. <laughs> now, that said, 
My father, at first, didn't necessarily understand that, didn't go along with it, didn't like the idea that I was going to spend money to go research schools to find out the perfect fit. But what I was doing was satisfying my own values, right? I was learning and figuring out my own values, and I was finding the perfect match. Before I learned anything about NLP, I was doing this process, albeit on a slower basis. I managed... Hmm? Prestige, big name, making sure I got the officially good education. Structure. Right. So the way in which I managed to resolve the conflict was I said, listen, Dad, I know that you want me to go to a good school. I know you want me to get a good liberal arts education. I want to get a liberal arts education too, but I am not enjoying the learning process at Cornell. It's not matching my natural experience. So I presented to him in very logical terms a business plan, so to speak, for choosing a better school. And he ended up, after the call, funding my research trip around the country to find schools that matched my paradigm. And then, of course, getting down there within six months was proof of the pudding. It's kind of neat. So I picked 10 schools that matched the exact criteria. It turns out Eckerd College is, is higher placed on the graduate school placement per capita than even Cornell is, than most of the Ivy League schools is, because this, the, the curriculum there is so phenomenal and the teachers there are so good. So they actually don't get paid enough to be there unless they love what they're doing, which was missing at Cornell. Right? They were all fighting to see if they could publish or perish. Whereas at Cornell, people loved the teaching process. Or not Cornell, Eckerd. Thank you. Yep. So that was an example of how I slowly used values, elicitation, and playback. Experientially playing it back as opposed to verbally playing it back. We can do it faster with NLP.